Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Abraham Lincoln, Part 15, Victory at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and Vicksburg, Mississippi. We stopped last time in 1863. On April 13th, General Ambrose Burnside issued General Order No. 38, in which anyone who spoke against the U.S. government uh, and it benefited the Confederacy was guilty of treason and subject to execution. And this uh, Senator Vallandigham was arrested, we mentioned in the previous video, and sentenced to confinement in a military prison for the rest of the war. President Lincoln decided to release Vallandigham and banish him to the Confederacy. Eventually, he ended up in Canada. It was very controversial. People thought it was a violation of rights, and others said, no, we... This, is, this guy is really destroying morale in the North. May 1st was the Battle of Chancellorsville, I uh, believe Virginia, and the Union and General Hooker had 70,000 troops against the Confederacy and General Robert E. Lee, who had only 25,000 troops, and the Union lost, lost that battle. Really tough. There were 17,000 Union casualties and only 13,000 Confederate casualties, so a very bloody battle. 30,000 casualties. Uh, The Battle of Chancellorsville, Virginia, from April 30th to May 6th. Again, uh, Union Army lost 17,000. The Confederates, 13,000. The Union had a two-to-one advantage, but still lost. Now, after this, certainly after the battle on May 10th, Confederate General Stonewall Jackson died. He had been accidentally shot by Confederate soldiers during the battle. This death was a disaster for the Confederacy because he was the top general uh, uh, under Robert E. Lee. Uh, General Robert E. Lee uh, could not feed his army, and he he decided to invade the North to get food. Regarding the Union defeat at Chancellorsville, President Lincoln said, My God, my God, what will the country say? What will the country say? So this was a big, uh, this was a disaster. Uh, The first two years of the war, President Lincoln turned down invitations to speak outside of Washington City, but he broke his silence in 1863. In May, there were rallies in Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, Indianapolis, Indiana, and New York City protesting the arrest of Congressman Vallandigham. Regarding the arrest of Vallandigham, President Lincoln said, quote, Must I shoot a simple-minded soldier boy who deserts? Well, I must not touch a hair of a wily agitator who induces him to desert. I think that in such a case to silence the agitator and save the boy is not only constitutional, but withal a great mercy. And President Lincoln invoked the example of Andrew Jackson, the Battle of New Orleans, and the War of 1812, who had arrested his critics during the battle for similar reasons. Public confidence in President Lincoln was down. This was especially after the defeat of Chancellorsville. President Lincoln was working 18 hours a day. He would walk from the walk and to and from the War Department several times daily, getting news from telegrams. At crucial moments of the war, President Lincoln sought face-to-face contact with key generals. On May 6, he met with General Hooker in Falmouth, Virginia. Again, this uh, Battle of Chancellorsville was really demore. A low point in the war, uh, 17,000 Union soldiers dead, wounded, or missing. There was despair in the, in the north. Uh, the Union army was decimated, demoralized. President Lincoln with, withstood the storm of defeat and replaced anguish with hope. So he was a fighter, had a fighting spirit. Uh, Montgomery Blair, or Monty Blair, in the Postal Service, did a good job of getting letters to and from soldiers in the field helping to keep up morale of the keep up the morale of the troops and I can testify that cuz my great great grandfather had a good correspondence with his wife and family uh, Tom Zook from Marion Ohio another a funny story May 27th 1863 a man by the name of Robert B Nay N A Y came to the White House asking for a pardon for his uh, his offense in the in the army and President Lincoln said quote I will not say the nay a funny play on words. The summer of 1863, uh, President Lincoln would travel to the soldiers' home out of town every night. Uh, 
he did not didn't stay at the White House. And uh, the poet Walt Whitman waited every day on President Lincoln's route to that summer home uh, to greet him. And they didn't they didn't speak. They made eye contact. Uh, and Lincoln eventually saw this guy looking you know looking for him and seeing him, and in a respectful way. And Whitman said, "Quote." We have got so that we always exchange bows and very cordial ones. So that's very nice. President Lincoln and Walt Whitman acknowledging each other every night on Lincoln's trip from the White House to the soldier's home. Now, there was a joke during this time. Two Quakers were talking, and one said, quote, I think Jefferson Davis will succeed. He is a praying man. And then his friend said, quote, Abraham Lincoln is also a praying man. And the first guy said, quote, the Lord will think Abraham Lincoln is joking. <laughs> okay, uh, a White House visitor came among the many visitors from the public and asked President Lincoln how it felt to be president. And Lincoln told the story of a man who had been tarred and feathered and ridden out of town on a rail. A man in the crowd asked how he liked it, and he said, quote, If it wasn't for the honor of the thing, he would much rather walk. <laughs> Good joke. By, uh, so he was having, it was a tough, tough job being president during, very tough job during the Civil War. News from Ulysses S. Grant and the Union Army in the West sustained President Lincoln, Grant's success. Grant was, uh, didn't, was pretty quiet, but he was a man of character and action, and President Lincoln respected him. President Lincoln was restless for news from uh, General Grant uh, regarding uh, t- the attempt to take Vicksburg, Mississippi, on May 10th, 19th, Grant attacked Vicksburg. Eventually, he lay siege. And then Grant said, quote, The fall of Vicksburg and the capture of the garrison can only be a question of time. And now, at the same time, we mentioned General Lee was moving, decided to invade the North again to try to convince the South that they could not win. The South's greatest loss during this time was Stonewall Jackson because his leadership was so inspirational. Is accidentally being shot by Confederate troops. Jackson was Robert E. Lee's right-hand man. On June 3rd, Robert E. Lee and the Confederate Army moved north. On July 2nd, there was an attempt to injure President Lincoln. Someone unscrewed the bolts on the driver's seats in the carriage, hoping that this well, there would be an accident. It would become and the accident did happen. It was the the. There was a de- it, it detached, and uh, Mary, unfortunately, was uh, riding, and she was thrown from the carriage. He, she hit her head on a sharp rock, and the wound was, became infected, and she had headaches. She did recover from that, so that was really an attempt on the life of President Lincoln. President Lincoln advised General Joe Hooker to attack Lee's army, not Richmond, that they would not win the war by taking Richmond, which was seemed to be the uh, perpetual, uh, the forever goal of uh, Union generals. On June 27th, President Lincoln decided to replace General Hooker with General George Meade. So this ongoing uh, um, parade of generals who would, that Lincoln uh, would get fed up with one guy. He's looking for a winner, a good uh, general. And they called George Meade Old Snapping Turtle. It was said that he always led from the f- front. By late June, the Battle of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania was getting close, and uh, this uh, President Lincoln said that Lee's invasion was an opportunity to, to hit the Confederate Army hard. The Battle of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania was the largest battle ever fought in the Western he- Hemisphere. There were a total of 165 soldiers, and it was a Union victory. During the f- battle, con- there was the Confederate ch- uh, charge of 13,000 soldiers, the famous Pickett's Charge by General, Confederate General Pickett. Getty- and Gettysburg was three of the most deadly days of the war. Now, Robert E. Lee said, quote, If I had Stonewall Jackson with me so far as man can see, I should have won the Battle of Gettysburg. After the Battle of Gettysburg, there were 300 surgeons who worked for five days performing the ap- amputations on wounded men. Uh, the men during the war frequently called nurses mother as a form of respect, and the nurses would call the men their boys. <coughs> From the beginning of the war, the nurses were engaged in letter-writing campaigns, asking their family fr- and friends for necessities for, quote, their boys. Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote, quote, 
If Robert E. Lee achieved victory at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, he could move on to Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington. So that was avoided. Yeah, he could have uh, lain, you know, terrorized the North, but it didn't happen because he had to retreat. Uh, so uh, the, at the Battle of Gettysburg, un, one of the Union generals was Abner Doubleday, who was the, f- fifth, the mythical founder of the game of baseball. At, at the Battle of Gettysburg, there were 23,000 Union casualties and 28,000 Confederate casualties, so a massive amount of uh, death and, uh, and guys getting wounded. As I said, the Confederates retreated. Union victory July 4th was a major celebration in uh, Washington City, uh, Independence Day and victory at Gettysburg. Mary's uh, first lady, Mary Todd Lincoln, her brother George was a Confederate Army surgeon, and he claimed to have performed 700 amputations in his career, many after the Battle of Gettysburg. The Confederate Army never recovered from Gettysburg, although the war went on for almost two more years. Uh, and, and again, Lee's army had to retreat after that uh, d- defeat. Historian J.C. Smith wrote, quote, It was an easy matter to trace their route of flight. Dead horses, broken down and abandoned wagons, cannons, carriages, and caissons, and new-made graves were everywhere to be seen. It was simply a road covered with wrecks. Historian Stephen Berry wrote, quote, War has a way of slimming men's egos. Soldiers dream not of fame and power, but of the life they took for granted while they pursued such things. Now, uh, while the victory of Gettysburg was taking place, Vicksburg actually uh, fell to the the Union. The Confederacy surrendered on July 4th, uh, and there were 30,000 rebel prisoners taken. And news of the victory, there were wild celebrations in the North. So July 4th wound up being... uh, was uh, not only Independence Day and going back to 1826, the deaths of... uh, uh, founding fathers John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, and the twin victories of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and Vicksburg, Mississippi. President Lincoln called the Vicksburg campaign, quote, one of the most brilliant in the world. President Lincoln said, quote, Ulysses S. Grant is my man, and I am his the rest of the war. Grant has the grit of a bulldog. Once let him get his teeth in, and nothing can shake him off. So when, when, uh, the, the Confederates surrendered uh, General, Confederate General Pemberton at Vicksburg, this Union victory. My great-great-grandfather was there, Tom Zook, and it, it, had, uh, it was really a siege. They'd been starved into submission and also with artillery fire. Um, now, after the surrender, there was no Union cheering, and Gr- uh, General Grant ordered th- this silent respect by the victors for the noble opponent. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and Vicksburg, Mississippi, two uh, Union victories. This was a a major uh, turning point for the good, for the Union. As I said, it took, uh, again, almost two more years. President Lincoln was very disappointed that General Meade uh, did not pursue the Confederates, Lee and the Confederate Army, and allowed them to escape. Uh, General Grant said that he thought it was understandable uh, since Meade was new in power in the Union Army. And that uh, the guys, the, the, the Union soldiers had been so badly, uh, they'd been, they were so tired from Gettysburg. Now, this was a turning point in the war. In August, General Ulysses S. Grant, uh, he supported black troops in the Union Army. And this was happening. They were, they were being trained. Frederick Douglass was upset that black troops were being mistreated and, and received less pay than white soldiers in the Union Army. After Gettysburg, uh, Robert E. Lee said, quote, We do not know what is best for us. I believe in a kind God. I believe a kind God has ordered all things for our good. Stephen Berry wrote, quote, President Lincoln knew his people would have to be coaxed into a deeper understanding. Gettysburg was just the first step. Again, he's talking about uh, the ending, ending slavery. President Lincoln loved the poem Mortality by William Knox, which goes like this, quote, Oh, why should the spirit of mortal be proud? Like a swift, fleeting meteor, a fast-flying cloud, a flash of lightning, a break of the wave, he passeth from life to his rest in the grave. 
Sam and Chase, uh, one, uh, one of the cab- members of the cabinet, wanted to become president in 1864, and President Lincoln thought was amused by this. Now, his secretary, John Hay, was upset, and Lincoln, President Lincoln told Hay the story of the lazy horse who suddenly had uh, became energized and walked, walked quickly to the end of the furrow. The farmer discovered a large chin fly on the horse and removed it. His friend said it was a mistake, that the fly was, quote, all that made the horse go. So the, the comparison was President Lincoln said Chase's ambition to become president uh, helped him to work hard for the cabinet, and he was raising resources for the war. So he thought he's working hard because of his ambition to become president. Regarding meeting the public, which was ongoing, he can, President Lincoln took time every day, hours every day, to meet the public. And he said, quote, Though the tax on my time is heavy, no hours of my day are better employed than those which bring me again within the direct contact of our whole people. Yeah, he was getting an idea of public opinion, what the people were thinking from these. This was very important for him to know how, what public opinion was. Now, one of the story. Now, President Lincoln was very patient, a good man, but he was getting. T- he, he could be tired and overwhelmed. And one time, he met a soldier who a- spoke with him about what he considered a petty matter. And President Lincoln lost his temper and said, "Quote: Now, my man, go away. I cannot attend to all these details. I could as easily bail out the Potomac River with a spoon." July 12th, there, were dra- there was the draft riot in New York City the dra- the, against the draft, guys who didn't want to be drafted into the Army and fight in the Civil War. Uh, the draft building was stormed by 500 people. The draft wheel was smashed. The lists of, and records were shredded, and the building set on fire. This also became an anti-black riot. Blacks were attacked. Poor Irish immigrants uh, were mo- seemed to be most of the rioters. A thousand people were killed and wounded, or wounded in five days of riots. A lot, mostly black victims. President Lincoln sent, sent federal, federal troops to restore order. On August 10th, uh, Frederick Douglass met with President Lincoln in the White House, and Douglass impressed Lincoln with his sincerity and devotion. De- I'm sorry, Douglass was impressed by Abraham Lincoln's sincerity and devotion to the country. Now, regarding opposition to the war, uh, those his critics who were against the war, President Lincoln said, quote, There are those who are dissatisfied with me. To such, I would say, you desire peace, and you blame me that we do not have it. You are dissatisfied with me about the Negro. You dislike the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, uh, President Lincoln's son, Robert, was uh, in college at Harvard during this time, and he had this to say about his father becoming president, quote, Thenceforth, any great intimacy between us became impossible. I scarcely had ten minutes' quiet talk with him during his presidency on account of his constant devotion to business. So that's pretty sad. Robert would come home on vacation, but President Lincoln, there was no vacation from the war. He was so busy. It was very sad he didn't have time for his son. On August 7th, uh, President Lincoln's secretary, John Hay, wrote, quote, the tycoon, now he's referring to President Lincoln as the tycoon, the tycoon is in fine whack. I've rare, rarely seen him more serene and busy. He is managing this war, the draft, foreign relations, and planning a reconstruction of the Union all at once. The good of the country absolutely demands that he should be kept where he is till this thing is over. There is no man in the country so wise, so gentle, and so firm. I believe the hand of God placed him where he is. In August, at the soldier's home, one night, President Lincoln was reading out loud. See, reading out loud was entertainment at that time. No movies or radio or TV. Lincoln was reading out loud to John Hay from William Shakespeare, quote, The end of Henry VI and the beginning of Henry III, till my heavy eyelids caught his considerate notice, and he sent me to bed. In August, uh, Secretary... Secretary of State William Seward went on a two-week tour of upstate New York with foreign ministers from England, France, Spain, Germany, and Russia. His son, Fred, wrote, quote, Hundreds of factories with whirring wheels, thousands of acres of golden harvest fields, miles of railway trains laden with freight, 
Busy fleets on rivers, lakes, and canals. Historian Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote, quote, All presage the inevitable triumph of the Union. So I think, yeah, that, that tour was meant to impress these uh, leaders of foreign countries that the Union was going to win the war because they had, they had so many resources. The summer of 1863 was a crucial transformation in the Union war effort. There were 180,000 black soldiers organized and deployed. The, the Emancipation Proclamation declared that black troops would be received into the U.S. armed service. Frederick Douglass said, quote, Why should a colored man enlist? You will stand more erect, walk more assured, feel more at ease, and be less liable to insult than you ever were before. He who fights the battles of America may claim America as his country and have that claim respected. On May 28th, uh, thousands of Bostonians in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, lined the streets to cheer the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, which was this black regiment led by Captain Robert Gould Shaw. Now, in that regiment, there were two of Frederick Douglass's sons, and Frederick Douglass was busy recruiting black soldiers. And, of course, the 54th Massachusetts Regiment was involved in the Battle of Fort Wagoner, which was became, they made a mo- the movie Glory about. Frederick Douglass said, quote, Once let the black man get upon his person the brass letters U.S., let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pocket, and there is no power on earth or under the earth which can deny that he has earned his right of citizenship in the United States. Black soldiers fought in the battles of Fort Hudson, Milliken's Bend, and Fort Wagner. They showed bravery and steadiness and earned respect from white soldiers and citizens. President Lincoln said to Frederick Douglass, quote, I think it cannot be shown that when I have once taken a position, I have ever retreated from it. He was trying to assure Douglass that he was not going to back off on his commitment to ending slavery and having black troops in the Union Army. As I mentioned, on August 10th, President Lincoln met Frederick Douglass for the first time. When Douglass arrived at the White House, there was no wait. As soon as uh, Lincoln was notified he was there uh, moments after his arrival. He was ushered in to see President Lincoln again, ahead of the others who were waiting in line. Now, there was a place called Camp Convalescent, also known as Camp Misery, was established in 1863 in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, it had 1,500 men there, uh, generally. It was uh, intended for soldiers who were not well enough to rejoin their regiments. They'd either been uh, sick or wounded, and, but they were too well to stay in a hospital. There were terrible conditions there, and many of the soldiers died there. Civil War hospitals were breeding grounds for diseases, smallpox, measles, pneumonia, influenza, and tuberculosis, typhoid, and yellow fever. The nurses often got sick from the conditions and stress. Hundreds of nurses lasted little more than one month, uh, worn down by the physical and emotional challenges. However, others stayed several years working as nurses during the Civil War. President Lincoln presented the case of the courage of black soldiers and the malevolence of some white people who were against the war. In September... Of 1863, President Lincoln was tasked with convincing the northern public, weary of the war, that the war was worth fighting. The common people of America saw President Lincoln as a gentle leader, free of egomania, of the egomania common among most political leaders. President Lincoln had the ability to bring people of different political viewpoints together. His new focus was Chattanooga, Tennessee, the juncture of the states of Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia, very strategic. In September was the Battle of Chickamauga in the border of Tennessee and Georgia. This was a Union defeat, and Union General William Rosecrans uh, performed poorly at Chickamauga. In September, Edwin, Secretary of War Edwin Stanton proposed the transfer of 20,000 Union troops from Virginia to Tennessee by train in one week, helping Ulysses S. Grant at Chattanooga. And this prevented a Union retreat. And Grant said a retreat, quote, would have been a terrible disaster. The country does not know how much it owes to Edwin M. Stanton for that night's work. 
Uh, Edwin Stanton and President Lincoln worked well together. There was another story that President Lincoln authorized the War Department to aid in a certain project, and Stanton refused to honor the order. And he called President Lincoln a damn fool for issuing that order. And then it got back to President Lincoln, who said, quote, Did Stanton say I was a damn fool? He did, sir. If Stanton said I was a damn fool, then I must be one, for he is nearly always right. I will step over and see him. So you see how President Lincoln was so good about taking insults and not letting it bother him. During the war, uh, Missouri was a ma- major problem. There was a ci- civil war, a whole civil war uh, in that state. It was, it was a story unto itself. A real terrible things happening there, uh, people, the people killing each other. President Lincoln said, quote, All the troubles described could be explained by the fact that during a civil war, confusion abounds along with deception and suspicion. In September, Mary's sister, Emily, the husband of Confederate General Ben Hardin Helm, who had been killed at the Battle of Chickamauga in southeastern Tennessee and northwestern Georgia, uh, uh, well, they got news that he had died, so Mary's brother-in-law had died, and, and, and President Lincoln knew this, knew this uh, man well, uh, Ben, ben Hardin Helm. He was very sad for the death of his bro- at the death of his brother-in-law, and President Lincoln said, quote, I feel as David of old did when he was told of the death of Absalom. Would to God I had died for thee, O Absalom, Absalom my son, my son. So that's a nice uh, reference to the Bible and the story of David and his son Absalom, who who died in a civil war against his own father. On October fifteenth, President Lincoln sent a pa- uh, wrote a pass for Mary's mother Betsy to go south and bring their her daughter Emily north to Kentucky, since her husband had died, and Kentucky was their home. Emily, uh, this widow of a Confederate general on the way to Kentucky, uh, made a, stopped in the White House for, for, a, for, a, for some time. And Emily said, quote, Mr. Lincoln and my sister met me with the warmest affection. We were all too grief-stricken for speech. We could only embrace each other in silence and tears. She continued, quote, We talk of old friends. We talk of immaterial things. We cannot open our hearts to each other as freely as we would like. This frightful war comes between us like a barrier of granite, closing our lips but not our hearts. For though our tongues are tied, we weep over our dead together and express through our clasped hands the sympathy we feel for each other in our mutual grief. So you have these two sisters on opposite sides of the war. They both, this Emily had lost her husband. They both had lost brothers and brothers brother-in-law. So, but you can see how this very tragic situation, this the Civil War and how it played out on, in people's personal lives, in this case, um, the First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln. During that visit uh, uh, of uh, pre- the, the, uh, President Lincoln and Mary's son Tad was playing with his cousin Emily, the daughter of Katie, and Tad showed a photograph of uh, his father, Abraham Lincoln, to Katie, and he said, quote, this is, the, this is the president. And then Katie said, that's not the president. Mr. Jefferson Davis is president. And T- Tad said, hurrah for Abe Lincoln. And then Katie said, hurrah for Jeff Davis. And then so they were arguing about who was the president. Of course, they, were, they both were president, but of Lincoln of the Union of the United States of America and Jefferson Davis of the Confederate States of America. There was a Senator Harris at the White House who met Emily, and he said, quote, Well, we have whipped the rebels at Chattanooga, and I hear, madam, that the scoundrels ran like scared rabbits. And Emily said, quote, It was the example that you set them at Bull Run and Manassas. And this other, the Senator Harris said to uh, uh, Mary, quote, why isn't Robert in the army? He is old enough and strong enough to serve his country. However, Mary didn't want to lose another son. Eventually, he did join the Union near the end of the war and serve with General Grant. Union General Sickles visited the White House and said regarding Emily, quote, to President Lincoln, quote, you should not have that rebel in your house. President Lincoln responded and said, quote, 
General Sickles, my wife and I are in the habit of choosing our own guests. We do not need from our friends either advice or assistance in the matter. So he was standing up for his rights to, you can see this controversial standing. He, that was his sister-in-law and her husband had just died. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Uh, um, good luck with your own uh, effort. Reading a study of history, there's so many wonderful things to study in history, many incredible history books. So far, we've made 730 history videos in eight areas, world history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, autobiography, and Cleveland basketball. There's a, we have a website, Adventures in History, with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. There's a donate feature. You might consider making a donation to support our work. If you live in Metro Manila, Philippines, and are looking for a high school, you might consider Restless Educational Center. Restless is located in San Juan, Metro Manila, Philippines. Not far from the corner of P. Guevara and Wilson Street, at Restless, we specialize in helping young people who have had difficulty in the, in the larger traditional high schools. At Restless, we are creative and innovative and try to make, and a supportive community, we try to make the school uh, uh, interesting for, so the students enjoy going to school and enjoy learning. And the website is restless.education, R-E-S-A-L-E-S-T. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.